Welcome to The Metabolic Link, a medical and science-focused podcast that explores the common thread of metabolism in health and disease. This is where science meets society. Hello and welcome to the very first episode of The Metabolic Link. We are thrilled to be here with you today. And thank you so much for joining us on this exciting first episode. This has been a long time in the making. There is so much to talk about when it comes to the science on metabolic health and metabolic-based therapies that uh, really we've been discussing this podcast for some time and finally it's out in the world. So thank you for being here. Um, and I wanna mention that we're gonna be doing frequent episodes, not just with the three of us, but also with world-renowned experts um, who can dive into their area of research or even maybe clinical application. We're gonna be offering presentations through this podcast. Um, and you're gonna be seeing a, a lot of deep dives into the research and its potential in the real world. I think that's really a key important area too. Um, and some of these episodes, you'll be able to earn continuing medical education credits as well, which is a big deal for some of you out there. Um, but before we dive in, why don't we first introduce ourselves and a little bit about our background. Dom, would you like sure. to kick it off? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Dom, Dominic, D'Agostino. <laughs> Uh, I'm associate professor at USF, Morsani College of Medicine, uh, also research associate at Institute for Human and Machine Cognition. And our lab has been very passionate uh, and kind of down in the weeds on metabolic-based research and really passionate about moving the science to application and, and also the educational outreach associated with that science and the application. And uh, I'm just very excited to bring this information with my friends here to you. My name is Angela Poff. Um, I'm a research associate at University of South Florida. I work with Dominic there. Um, he was my PhD mentor and postdoc mentor, and I've continued to work with him since then. Um, and our lab really, as he mentioned, focuses on non-toxic um, novel methods of targeting metabolism. I have a big focus and interest in cancer metabolism specifically, and our lab also does a lot of uh, neurological disease research as well. So we are kind of like a metabolism lab with a very broad um, research focus. And I'm very interested and excited about education. And that's something that uh, I've kind of put a lot of effort uh, towards in the past few years. Victoria and I uh, founded Metabolic Health Initiative together, which is a organization that um, uh, puts out educational content related to metabolic health. And uh, we host the annual medical scientific conference called Metabolic Health Summit. Um, and so this podcast is a fun kind of extension of what we've all been doing over the past mm -hmm. you know decade plus <laughs> of our lives getting information about metabolic and me metabolic health and therapies into the world because we think it's very important to do so absolutely and i'm victoria field i have a little bit more of an eclectic background compared to <laughs> these two i uh, actually got my start my career started the first seven years of it uh, i was an nbc affiliate news reporter and anchor who was simultaneously running uh, several fitness and nutrition based businesses alongside my husband uh, where we coached everything from um, you know the person wanting to lose weight all the way to um, athletes professional athletes um, i later got out of television and uh, uh, ended up getting my pro card and uh, competed as a professional athlete in the fitness and bodybuilding world. And um, around that time, met some people in the industry, the fitness world that um, allowed for me to transition into cancer research. So I really wanted to do even more uh, than what I was doing in the nutrition space and really help people on a very deep level. Um, and so got involved in cancer research and in the implementation of metabolic therapy uh, for cancer uh, alongside some incredible dietitians that I worked with and really got some firsthand experience in working uh, with cancer patients, um, dealing with a wide variety of, of different types of cancer, using uh, the ketogenic diet as a tool and largely using the incredible work of Dr. Dominic D'Agostino, Dr. Angela Puff here um, and what they had done in the lab and really trying to put that into um, the real world in a, in a in a responsible way that maybe we could get some really good information on how do, how do we move this field forward. Um, and that's where, you know, Angela mentioned that's what led to us 
um, really saying, how do we take this to the next level and bring all these incredible minds together? And Metabolic Health Summit was born along with uh, Metabolic Health Initiative. And really this podcast, as Angela had mentioned, is a, a, another effort to put this research uh, that might not often get talked about enough, you know, provide a loudspeaker and really start the conversation. So that's why we really tr truly appreciate you being here because without you, we can't spread the word and um, really start the, the, an important conversation. Um, but why the metabolic link? So that podcast name came about um, because we really thought a lot about sort of what is the issue at hand here? You know, as a society, we're metabolically unhealthy. I mean, when you, you think big picture, I think it's nine out of 10 people are in fact metabolically unhealthy and more than 70% of Americans are either obese uh, or overweight. So clearly we've got a bit of an issue here. And the evidence is showing us that there is really this tie, this common thread, this link, if you will, um, <laughs> that's um, bringing all of these, that's sort of this common thread between a lot of these diseases that we're sort of seeing. You know, you, you're looking at things like Alzheimer's and, and mental health and, and cancer and all of the things that plague us today really have this common thread of metabolism. Um, however, you know, when it comes to the medical education side of things, um, there really, unfortunately, isn't a lot of nutrition-based or metabolism-based, metabolic-based therapies that are sort of a part of the discussion and medical curriculum. So that's where we said, you know, we really need to bring this information um, to people because the lay public are also looking for this information as well and really trying to find the guidance and the resources, but don't quite know who to turn to, who to trust. That's why we always hear, we'll hear, we'll put evidence first, um, science first, Let's really have a, um, a discussion around the research that uh, hopefully can move this field forward. But why don't we go back to the basics and discuss what is metabolic health? Everybody's throwing the, those words around, but let's define it and let's talk a little bit more about it. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I guess I'll kick off. Metabolic health can be defined a, a variety of different ways, but it is the major risk factor associated with cancer. Uh, neurological diseases and cardiovascular diseases, right? So these, uh, and if we optimize and uh, control our diet, which is we can directly or indirectly improve metabolic health through diet, through exercise, of course, uh, sleep and stress and different medications too can uh, improve and optimize uh, metabolic health. If we can do that and get a handle on our metabolic health, then that can prevent us uh, from early onset of age-related chronic diseases, you know, and neurological being high on the list of things that we study, cancer and cardiovascular disease. So there are a variety of different biomarkers that we'll be talking about through uh, our discussions here and how to measure them, what the optimal ranges are, and different strategies that we can use through dietary interventions and that, not just the ketogenic diet, but there are a wide variety of dietary interventions, exercise, sleep, uh, and medications like I had mentioned. Okay, so we've got a great general definition of metabolic health, but on a molecular level, why don't we dive into metabolism and how it might be directly connected to a variety of diseases here? Yeah, I, I think that's what's so fascinating, especially for me as like a basic science researcher. I, I am fascinated by how many mechanisms are similar on a tissue level, on a cellular level, in different tissues of like vastly different diseases. So we're talking about like chronic diseases, some of these really hallmark things that you are likely someone's going, you know, everyone will develop one of these eventually in their lifetime, essentially. Cancer, cardiovascular disease, um, stroke, for example. So diseases of aging, I guess. And um, when you start looking at uh, some of the similarities between these disorders, it's really striking and shows you just how important metabolism is. And I think we can kind of conceptualize it a little bit better when we think about a class of disorders that is very specifically caused by metabolic defects. So these are called inborn errors of metabolism. This is a, a set of rare genetic diseases that are caused by 
genetic mutations in metabolic enzymes. And it's what's really interesting to me is that a single mutation in a metabolic enzyme can cause very, very significant and diverse um, sim uh, symptoms, including things like seizures are very common, mm -hmm. cognitive uh, dysfunction, um, uh, motor dysfunction, just complete like physiological abnormalities. So you see just from the perspective of a single metabolic enzyme causing widespread tissue damage and dysfunction on a, a, a whole organismal level. So for example, something like GLUT1 uh, deficiency oh. syndrome. Mm -hmm. This is a disorder caused by a mutation in a glucose transporter. And these individuals have, um, uh, you know, disabilities that affect them on a global oh. scale, both cognitively, yeah. physically, um, seizures, and, yeah. um, and things like that. And I think that shows you how powerful metabolism is. I mean, that's a mm -hmm. single metabolic enzyme. There's thousands of them, right? These mm -hmm. metabolic pathways are super complex. And so in- And with GLUT1, I just want to yeah, mention, even in the presence of a persistent molecular pathology that was described by Angela with a deficiency of GLUT1, a ketogenic diet can be used to symptomatically control uh, many of the symptoms associated with that disease. And that would be the seizures, the motor function, and even developmental delays. So even in the presence of a persistent genetic molecular pathology, you have a dietary metabolic-based intervention that can symptomatically treat it without genetically treating uh, the gene yeah. at hand. So, yeah, yeah. And, and so you can kind of zoom out from there. You think about disorders that are clearly and directly caused by a very specific metabolic issue. And then zoom out to disorders that maybe at first glance, if you're not familiar with it, you wouldn't think there would be any kind of metabolic component at all. Things like neurological diseases, like mm. seizures, epilepsy, um, Alzheimer's disease, for example, multiple sclerosis, um, uh, stroke. You psychiatric know, diseases. Psychiatric mm -hmm. a, a great example. Um, and so, but what's fascinating is when you look at the tissues that it, um, that are being affected in these different disorders, you really see a few commonalities. Very commonly, you see mitochondrial dysfunction. Mm. Remember, guys, the mitochondria, the uh, powerhouse of the cells, <laughs> people <laughs> like to say in elementary school. Um, the mitochondria are the hub for energy production uh, in your cells. And they don't just make energy. They also control uh, cell life or death. They control apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. Um, and some other really important things. Neurotransmitters are made in the mitochondria. MAO oxidase, for example, yeah. you know, the synthesis of the neurotransmitters used by neurons. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. uh, they regulate redox homeostasis. Mm -hmm. So um, the mitochondria are also a major site of free radical production. These are um, oxygen-based little molecules that um, play a normal part of our physiology and are normally made during uh, energetic um, pathways. But they, if they get out of control, they can start damaging the rest of the cell and start messing up normal functionality. Um, oxidative stress, which is what is called when those free radicals are kind of uh, out of control, is a huge consistent um, metabolic feature of these different diseases. You see oxidative stress. You see mitochondrial dysfunction in, for example, in uh, the brain cells of Alzheimer's patients. Mm -hmm. But you also see it in the tumor cells of a cancer patient. Mm -hmm. And you see it in the neurons of an epilepsy patient. So it's, it's very fascinating that very diverse disorders have very similar similar uh, characteristics associated with uh, with um, metabolism. Others include inflammation, um, mm -hmm. chronic inflammation, uh, elevation of some of these pro-inflammatory cytokines like TNF alpha and IL uh, one beta. Um, you have uh, abnormal glucose and insulin signaling is really really common, mm -hmm. S and and still in these diseases you re really wouldn't think about it. Yeah. You know, like Alzheimer's being type yes. three diabetes. So. Right. Alzheimer's disease and other neurological diseases are associated with glucose uh, hypometabolism in many cases, whereas cancer, on the other hand, is associated with glucose hypermetabolism, as mm -hmm. defined by you know an FDG PET scan. 
So you have a metabolic uh, phenotype, and there's a bit of a discussion uh, and a debate in some circles about the metabolic origin of these things. But one ubiquitous thing that we see is that there's a metabolic component uh, that has recently uh, gotten the attention and, and more attention in the last decade of looking into the metabolic component of these things. Yeah, and and all of these things, and including microbiome dysregulation, mm -hmm. which is really coming to the forefront as being mm -hmm. so important, I think what is most striking to me is these are all very heavily influenced by diet, exercise, lifestyle choices, mm -hmm. and are targetable with pharmaceuticals. You can design you know, pharmaceuticals mm -hmm. that target these pathways as well. And in my opinion, it's it's a field that is growing so rapidly because of how promising it is, um, and it was perhaps not given um, as much you know thought in the past. And and I think just understanding that this the that metabolism and me metabolic dysfunction is really a, a common feature between all of these different disorders mm -hmm. makes it so promising as a therapeutic target. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really clear that there is this common thread that <laughs> is tying everything sort of together or metabolic link, if you will, and hence why we're here and why we're really trying to uh, spread the message around this research, um, elevate the science, bring the experts together. So in addition to the three of us taking deep dives into the research, we'll also be bringing in the experts that are either in the lab or in the clinic applying this information. So it's, it's really going to be a great diverse podcast that explores evidence and, and puts the science first above all else. And I cannot wait to be on this journey with all of you as well as you two, I think this is going to be, it's really an exciting time for our field and um, really looking forward to pushing this forward in a big way. So uh, thank you all for listening to our podcast. Make sure you follow and subscribe. All of the, all of the places that you might listen and consume a podcast will be there. Um, follow us on social media, like, comment, and maybe even leave us a review for the podcast as well. And we look forward to seeing you very soon. And uh, thanks so much for listening. Thank you. Thanks.